So next we have um, Sue, Joanne and Danielle and they're going to be talking to us about champion, championing change, innovation practice. Sorry about, yeah, there you all are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, good morning all. Well, I think it's still morning. Thank you so much. Closer. So my name is Katarina Sorrentonio and I'm the Fluad Brand Manager at Securus and I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about our championing change. Can you hear me? Closer. Is that better? Awesome. Sorry, I'm probably too tall for this. Okay. Yes? Just flag me down if you can't hear me. Um, yes, I'm very excited to be here today on behalf of Securus, a very proud partner of AFNA, to talk to you about our Championing Change program, which is, um, consists of grants for practice nurses demonstrating innovation in adult immunisation. So there are three nurse-led initiatives that will be shared today by Ju uh, Sue, Joe and Danielle, um, our 2018 grant recipients. Um, and they, the, their initiatives were all designed around helping to boost um, immunity in adult vaccination. So this slide really shows you, um, I guess, the Championing Change program. Um, and it was, uh, last year was the inaugural year. So the first year that Secure has put together the program and put it out there to the community of nurses to apply um, and we had three winners. There was an independent uh, review panel that assessed um, 30 applications and we were very excited about that. And each recipient was given $5,000 as part of their prize and also the opportunity to attend AFNA um, with their flights and accommodations all covered. Here is the grant criteria. Um, and as you would have heard if you were in the session this morning, um, Dr. Litt did mention that there was three different people who assessed the panel, so Angela Newbound, Magali de Castro and also um, Dr. Sarah Chu. And the three um, recipients were from all different states. Their programs are very different um, and they were both rural and urban setting. And there was no really, no project is too small or too large for you to be able to um, uh, put your application in. And we're first gonna hear from Sue um, and she'll tell us about her initiative. I'm Sue, I work at the Hamley, is that Hi. <laughs> I'm Sue, I work at the Hamley Bridge Medical Centre. We're a, a small country practice in a rural setting. We are um, about 70 k's north of Adelaide and yeah, about 620 residents. Most of the, we're surrounded by farming community and a transient population uh, work elsewhere. Um, we provide medical services for quite a, a, quite a large radius. Um, we have patients that come as far down as, as Salisbury and north, as far north as Clare and, and Saddleworth. Um, we have two GPs, two nurses and two practice managers and reception staff. Um, our challenge was to, to inform and educate the farming community um, about adult vaccinations why we vaccinate um, and which vaccinations to, to have. Um, and we really wanted to target those farming community that really don't go to the doctor very much at all. Um, so we, we thought education is the key and um, we wanted to promote in the times where we would capture the most audience to take on this adult uh, vaccination information. Um, so our first part was we, we did a barefoot bowls and boosters night. It was really fun. We went to the local bowls club and um, we had a very good turnout um, where we had a display. We gave a talk about uh, the vaccinations appropriate for the, this population. Um, we had t-shirts with the grant money made up, which has become our uniform. Um, and we had on the back, don't wait vaccinate, which has um, attracted some attention in our practice. Um, and we, let, we left vouchers um, at this event um, for them to consequently come and have their vaccinations and receive a pen with Don't Wait Vaccinate as well. Um, 
We also went to the local um, kindergarten and we informed um, parents of, of gestational vaccinations for their families as well. Um, we had a really good response with that. We had some baby and belly bum cream made up, uh, which was a really well taken. Um, and we gave those away as well with vouchers for those who came back um, to vaccinate. And we had a lot of families come to grandparents. Um, so the word's getting out there. Um, we have a very good response to vaccinations in our little town, which is great. Uh, we also had, we had a, a 150th year celebration last year. So we had a promotional table outside on the weekend and we had a very good response to that too. And it was great that the doctors and the nurses could stand out and discuss and have some relaxed conversations um, in that relaxed environment too. We handed out pamphlets and vouchers on that day as well. Um, we've had great feedback from the community. Um, more than a dozen requests for adult vaccinations that weren't sent reminders uh, because we have a very good reminder system uh, and opportunistic as well, which probably works the best out of anything. Um, we uh, had nearly 20 responses from young mums um, and their friends as well who came along. Um, yeah, and we put some information in newspapers to promote it and set up a table at work and so forth. Um, oh, that's just what the review panel um, thought of our idea, which was really good. And it did actually cover the community. Um, tips, really keep it simple, communicate. It's really important. We work really well together. Uh, we've got a small team, um, but we, we um, share all the information that we can with each other. Um, and we often make displays up in our, in our medical practice. Um, and we spend time, spend a lot of time with the patients um, outside of our appointments to discuss these things. Um, we did all, there yeah, we open, for, yeah, friendly environment. And it helps when the doctor comes out and talks as well with the patient on a non-medical, in a non-medical um, atmosphere. It was really great. And I really thank Securus for that opportunity because we really enjoyed it and it was successful. I encourage everybody to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle. Thank you. Sorry, I'm too short for this. Um, so, hi, my name is uh, Danielle, and I'm the team leader at uh, the GP clinic at uh, IPC Health in Deer Park. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge uh, Sophie, who is the manager of our clinic operations, and also. Um, Sarah Christensen, who's our Refugee Health Nurse co uh, Program Coordinator, um, who contributed quite a lot to um, the uh, grant submission. So just a bit of information uh, about our clinic. Um, we are a community health service. Uh, we're in the western suburbs of Melbourne. We have actually five GPs, uh, seven RNs, and six of us are nurse immunisers. So we're quite uh, fortunate uh, to have lots of, I guess, people available to answer all of the immunisation inquiries that we were hoping to receive. Um, our clinic is located in one of Australia's most top 10 disadvantaged uh, local government areas, which can be quite a challenge for us. And also, as you could see, 45% um, of the people living in our area um, are born overseas. English is of a second language. And because we have a refugee health program in particular, we have quite a very high uh, refugee population in our clinic. And our other significant population is actually um, quite a, an elderly and aged population. So obviously one of our barriers is people having English as a, um, not a first language. Um, we also have a large number of people with a very low health literacy, both our refugee and our non-refugee population. We um, have a lot of people um, having, as you guys would know, lots of different beliefs um, and uh, myths uh, around vaccination. Um, and we've got a lot of people who, who um, can't afford to pay for private vaccines, which are recommended in the Australian Immunisation Handbook, um, but are not covered under the National Immunisation Program, um, particularly um, DTPA containing vaccines like a Boostrix or um, people who are not immune to Hep B. Um, we actually have quite a high numbers of chronic Hep B where we are because of our population. So that's something that we feel is uh, very, very important. So um, our solution sort of had to be a few different ideas because one idea won't 
just reach, I guess, one population. Um, so our idea was, um, firstly, we do a bit of just a Facebook campaign on adult vaccination. Um, for those who don't use social media, which is a lot of our elderly clients and also our refugee clients or people who don't uh, speak English, um, we did uh, some in-clinic activities to try and capture these people um, to either raise awareness or if we were lucky to get them to agree to opportunistic uh, vaccinations. Um, we heavily use our health translations and other translated materials uh, in other languages and having lots of pictorial based resources inside the clinic. And we did also use some of the money from the grant to subsidise some of the private vaccines to discount them slightly to see if that would make a difference in people actually willing to be able to pay for them. So. Um, with the social media campaign, um, I guess one of the tips I would say to people is, you know, obviously you need to be mindful of what you're putting on social media. How is your wording? Um, are people going to actually understand if you just talk medically too much um, and thinking about the wording of, of what is pneumococcal disease or use too much medical terminology? Obviously, people are going to completely miss your point and not understand what you're trying to tell them. Um, we also didn't want to actually, you know, scare them by saying, you know, oh, shingles, this is nasty. You're going to end up with this really horrid rash because there's, you know, that lovely poster where that, that shingles poster that we've all got in our clinic for that person, it's just right in their eye. And some people look at that and think, oh, that's a bit full on. Um, I guess the other thing is um, thinking about, uh, do people actually know, like our first post wasn't even about, um, you know, come and get this vaccine, come and get that vaccine. It was, did you know that we actually provide a vaccine service within our clinic? Um, and we have nurses who can help you. Um, in clinic, we offer the, the HALO quiz um, to clients arriving just to get them to sort of think about what sort of vaccinations do I need. Um, we had translated materials and we also heavily rely on translating and interpreting services for our clients um, through TIS or through private companies. Um, we search our clinic software and we use um, PENCAT clinical audit tool quite a lot to try and find um, our clients. So we're targeting actual populations and so we're also seeing um, where we're starting with our patients. So what did we do? Oh, what were our results? So we ended up um, having 60 patients receive a subsidised vaccine who otherwise wouldn't have been able to afford it. Um, we increased our Zostavax rates to 60% of our population who were in the 70 to 79 um, age group. And we had 83 adult refugees vaccinated, um, both planned and opportunistically throughout the three month period. Um, so obviously we're hoping to ban, um, build and expand on that um, to increase it even more. Um, and that's just what they were saying about our little campaign. So yeah, these are my tips there. Um, know your audience, target your things, uh, be flexible. If something's not working, don't keep going. Make sure you reassess. Um, the biggest thing as well is if you're going to put things up on vaccination on social media, be prepared for people to make comments um, and make sure somebody is moderating and monitoring your posts. Um, so sorry it's a bit rushed, but we didn't have much time to speak, but you're more than welcome to come and speak to me um, if you have any questions. And next I'll hand you over to Joe from Wheelers Hill. Thank you. Hi, um, my voice is going, I'm sorry about that. Um, my name is Jo, I'm a nurse, uh, fairly new to general practice in the last five years. Um, uh, I work at, at Willis Hill Medical Centre, which is about six k's from Brisbane City, fairly large centre and we've just doubled in size space-wise. So we've got 15 GPs, about seven RNs who are all part-time. Um, and we keep 12 specialists in and out of the practice on a regular basis and we have five allied health providers in-house as well. Um, so we have uh, probably mostly young families and the elderly in our practice as clientele. We see lots of kids um, and we found that we were definitely covering our kids and vaccinating well with our children, but there was a definite gap in our adult vaccines. So when we saw the grant um, competition, we thought this was definitely for us. We need to up our adult immunisation. Um, some of the... So some of our challenges in, in the practice were that the software that we, that we had at the time um, was not easy to search who we'd vaccinated and who, who we were missing 
and that was a real issue for us. Um, and we wanted to make sure we were doing more of that. Um, and one of our big things was that the nurses were always allocated at the back of the centre and sometimes we missed out on that opportunistic vaccination rate. Um, the only people really who saw every patient that came into the surgery were our receptionists. So we tried to design a, a screening tool that would take from the beginning of the practice all the way through the practice, starting with reception and going all the way through. And so um, we used a screening questionnaire tool and we um, basically wanted it to highlight recalls and future vaccines as well. Um, identify patients that needed vaccination because we didn't even have pop-ups on our software system at that stage. Um, we've since changed to best practice and it's got these lovely pop-ups and reminders and it's fabulous and we're getting pink hat, which will be great for our vaccination rates and for us to check our quality. Um, and we just wanted to increase our community awareness, particularly with our Greek population who English was a second language for. Um, so we um, designed our little questionnaire and basically what happened with the questionnaire was all, every adult in the practice who presented for an appointment was given a questionnaire, filled it in in the waiting room while they were waiting to see the doctor, took the, vaccine, took the questionnaire to the doctor with them um, the doctor discussed what patients, it, the form is um, a yes, no, or a not sure. Um, so even if you don't know what vaccines you've had, you've develop, developed that conversation with the GP um, and you find out what you've been vaccinated for if you've forgotten, which we found a lot of our elderly patients did forget. Um, and the doctor then writes on the form what the patient needs vaccination-wise, if they need anything, and any recalls from the future, even if it's five years in advance, we can stick that on the system and it's in there ready to go. Um, the patient then goes and sees, is directed straight to the nurse area, the treatment room. We perform those vaccines, log them with AIR and put in any recalls that they need at that time in the computer system. Um, where am I up to? So we supported our questionnaire with a few things. We had. Um, a T-shirt made, which is now a uniform, which was the biggest conversation starter of the whole thing. Um, we did um, a big promotion at the front of the surgery um, with uh, billboards, light boards, um, and uh, posters and patient information um, on the seven government-funded vaccines we were targeting with our questionnaire. Um, and uh, we used our money to do all this and purchase a second vaccine fridge, um, as well as, um, uh, we still haven't got it, but we have ordered it, a little laptop, which we think will be great for our mobile vaccination clinics and in-house vaccine clinics too. Um, so part of, um, part of getting the project up and running was the staff education, and we found that well, that was one of the most important things, make sure all the nurses were up to date with all the vaccines that we were targeting, make sure our receptionists who were really at the coalface knew what the vaccination form was about and, and, and so for them it made it easier if we wrote them a bit of a script and this is the sort of tool we gave them at each of the reception desks um, to encourage people to fill in the form. Um, so our results, um, so in a period between 2018 and 2019, over a month period, we um, had a 40% increase in our pneumococcal vaccines and a 96.7% increase in our uh, shingles vaccine use. Um, we've had 100% of the forms that were handed out and generated a conversation with their GP about what vaccines they needed and what vaccines they should be getting. And 35% of all forms completed initiated either a vaccine or a recall, or both. Um, so, I mean, more subjectively, um, the whole project created a lot more conversation with our patients and our clientele um, about vaccine in our community and adult vaccination. Um, yeah, I think uh, the review panel were pretty happy with it, and so we got to do the project, which was amazing because we're always so short of money to do little things like this, and money like this really helps broaden our nursing scope in general practice, and it was fantastic to have the money from Securus to do this. Um, 
And some of the handy things I would suggest if you're doing something like a, a screening tour, make sure everybody's aware of what you're doing beforehand. Have a nurse on call on day one to make sure that everyone knows what's going in, troubleshoot anything. Um, we ended up with questionnaires all over the place. They ended up being a really good um, tool for checking how we'd gone with the project and, and finding out how many people we had vaccinated, given that we didn't have a, re a, a very good tool at the time on the computer. Um, and to listen to feedback and make changes. So our form now is attached to all our new, new patient forms. Um, we're just about to add Boostrix to it um, and redesign the form slightly. And um, yeah, we just meet, meet with our staff on a regular basis to make sure they're happy with how it's going. Thank you so much.